All right, I've been asked not just to talk about the Center for Business Growth, although I will to get to that, but also to talk about the idea of collaboration. And I'll start by talking a little bit about the university, um, because I'm up here, and uh, because we have seen how collaboration can transform not just what each of the businesses in the room and the organizations in the room is capable of doing, but what universities are capable of doing as well. And South Australia is quite lucky to have um, three large comprehensive universities to draw on in its efforts to transform the economy. So the uh, University of South Australia overall, um, I think many of you are familiar with it. And of course, we're in Mount Gambier, as well as in Wyala. And that's an important part of our charter. Um, that is one of the differentiating factors. And I think it's important that the state has set out a very large and robust university network with three universities and um, a regional presence for universities as well. And I know it impacts many of you. So James Morrison Academy was here earlier. That's a collaborative um, undertaking from the state, from the city, from the University of South Australia, from James and his broad global network of um, music educators and musicians. And I think those kinds of things are absolutely transformative, bringing fiber optic cable. I was talking to Graham Excella, uh, mayor in, uh, in Tatiara, and he, he wasn't asking me about the, the kinds of things that are mayoral. He was talking about why we put a fiber optic cable across his land um, on the way to redeveloping the Mount Gambier campus and launching the building last month. And that's really to bring the fastest possible information streams into Mount Gambier and be part of the development of the region. But it also allows us to connect into classrooms around the world from the campus and to bring healthcare uh, professionals and healthcare expertise into the campus. So those are the kinds of collaborations between infrastructure providers in the state that actually make a big difference to economic development. Because of course, there's all kinds of ways that universities affect um, the regions, from graduates to knowledge transfer. And that's an important part of the mission of all of our universities. I lead the top business school in the state, and I'm allowed to say that. Um, we're one of the better business schools this side of Melbourne, and um, we take that very seriously. Noel talked this morning about um, what is being done around entrepreneurship and startups. And that's something that suddenly seems, I don't think you can escape the newspaper or the media right now without hearing the word innovate. Um, if we're going to have buzzword bingo, we could probably all be wealthy in the room from putting our coins in the jar. But it is an important transformative force for the regions, for the state overall. And startups are a part of it. But they're not all of it. I think it's great when graduates make a job rather than take a job and make companies rather than depend on depending on others to employ them. And we've heard some great entrepreneurial stories today. But one of the things that we actually focus on that's to actually complement what's happening at Flinders and at Adelaide is we focus on business growth. And I'll be talking about the center in a little while. The reason we focus on business growth and why all universities focus on innovation and entrepreneurship as well is not just the economic development of the state, it's a moral imperative. Look at how many graduates we have. How can we possibly take your children, educate them, and not do something for the state to make sure that they have bright futures here? That's the reason that we are so involved in the economic development of the state, because we owe it to our graduates as alumni to make sure they're successful. Every company that we've heard from today has, to my mind, because I'm in the section on collaboration, talked about how they've collaborated. From the uh, story that Hello Friday told about working with clients and educators and developing something totally different to showcase their skills, to um, Cummins um, milling talking about the start of his business, which wasn't, you know, kind of in the shower having an idea about new food. It was trying to help a friend who had horses and turning to another friend who was in milling and composition to put together something that would help that friend initially. It was a collaborative kind of evolution of what he was trying to do. And then the Earth Foods example where the board, that is friends and family, actually brought 
the company back to its strategy and being about the community and collaborating with the people and the workforce and the needs of the area around it. Each of those are fundamental examples of collaboration. And why do we collaborate? Because it brings much better ideas to the table. It means it brings feedback about whether things are working or not, and it keeps us true to our values in our communities. It leads to better results. Now, I don't have a fancy academic model for that. There are lots of them around teamwork and diversity and the way we create ideas. But at the basis of it, what Noel Lindsay started with this morning was that entrepreneurship is about creating something new, not necessarily with the access to the knowledge and resources at the time you start. And what collaboration does is bring us those resources. It brings us ideas, sometimes capital, lots of ideas, lots of criticism, and sometimes other important resources, access to markets, the opportunity to trial, and pilot projects. And collaboration is absolutely at the center of many of the stories we've heard today. Internally and externally, whether you're getting your collaboration inside the company or you're collaborating with government, a lot of the stories we've heard today have included collaboration with state, local, and federal government. Uh, whether you're collaborating with universities, three of the stories today have had very clear collaborations with university partners. It drives innovation. It also drives productivity and growth. And you need, universities have a, a very unique, and I think privileged role in that, um, in bringing, not just in the collaboration with universities and small and medium-sized businesses and governments, but because they're often forums to bring people together. Um, they've got a wealth of knowledge, and I'm not just talking about we're knowledge creators, I'm talking about we're able to broker and exchange and bring the future with existing expertise into it. Um, opportunity spotting, um, the kind of idea that entrepreneurs are able to spot opportunities, has been refined in a lot of models to move beyond the idea to the network and what are the resources and the people and the collaborations that are going to help us to get there. And I think a lot of the story that was coming from Bowman's was actually about those kind of network collaborations, good ideas fed by networks and trying lots of things. So what does collaboration mean um, between universities and industries when that happens? Um, it's difficult. I, I, I love the little brand essay and the essay pins because they've got us as a doorway to the rest of the country. Sometimes businesses and even government struggle with finding the doorway to universities. Um, there are so many points of entry or so many different uh, ways that you can enter that it can be difficult. Um, so one of the things that we try to do is not just provide ideas but provide the types of resources that make business possible. Um, and one of the most underutilized resources that we have, and one of the most powerful, is in the young people that work with universities, in their ability to tackle projects. And um, both Flinders and Adelaide were talking about that earlier. We all do this. It's great development for organizations, and it's great development for young people. Collaborate with us and use the talent and resources in all of our organizations to develop the future entrepreneurs of the state, but also to help you help your organizations develop and grow. The um, Robbie in, in Potato Land, um, there's all those wonderful resources about what can happen in um, transforming waste are the kinds of things that our students would all be so passionate about and we'd be happy to help you. And of course, the wonderful thing about interns is, generally speaking, they're a free resource because everyone's learning and that's what those are created for. There's also study placements where students actually do projects for you. And finally, I know that um, the ministers and Brandis have talked about the importance of those international missions as you internationalize your businesses, but one of the things that universities are really good at is actually helping companies prepare for internationalization. Not just because of the expertise we have in our staff, but because we have the largest population of international residents um, in the state. 
residing with and through our three universities. And those are a tremendous untapped potential for businesses who wish to understand other regions of the world. We have 134 countries represented at the University of South Australia, and I'm quite sure that Flinders and Adelaide could say the same. We represent a small UN test site for businesses in the state. Um, and that's an incredibly important resource when you're trying to translate your product's quality and also get a good idea of what life is like and what the pattern of consumption um, is like in a different part of the world. So while you might think of us in kind of typical ways and traditional ways about incubation and ideas and research and development, universities have a much broader role in collaboration for economic development. We also focus very specifically on helping companies transform and grow. And you've heard that from um, my colleagues from other universities as well. At the startup stage, and I tend to de-emphasize startup. I was in the IT industry for a number of years and I did a lot of mergers and acquisitions, and startups are very sexy. Um, but um, the middle-aged woman in the middle there, the grow up, that's, um, that's actually where a lot of sustainable growth in the economy comes from. So like many um, universities, we do have very strong resources for innovation and collaboration. We work with Hewlett Packard um, on IT innovation and collaboration, and we have a resource center at the university and a lot of um, entrepreneurs and new startup companies come into that space. We have Venture Catalyst, which, with the, which is um, a partnership with the state to help fund student ideas and ventures to get up and going. And we've just picked, it's a secret, I can't tell you yet, but we've just picked two fabulous young companies uh, to be sponsored again under that scheme. And the ones that we've done before have been uh, incredibly successful, spun out, now employed on, in one case, 35, employees in the other 17, and following that little curve that Noel showed, we're talking about growth like that within six to 12 months. Then great ideas, um, really taking off, hitting the market very effectively. But our focus, because we know that there's great capacity already in the state around entrepreneurship, and people are working with kids, high school students, up through university, up through graduate school, up through PhD, the system's becoming increasingly permeated with the ideas about innovation and creating businesses. We're focusing on the middle, the small and medium sized. Now, there's a really good reason for that, and that we believe that in terms of getting fast movement in South Australia, We've got a lot of companies in this room and across the state who have the capacity to easily be twice as big as they are now. Some of them have the capacity to be 20 times as big as they are now. And if even 5% of our companies doubled in the state, we wouldn't be talking about the industries we've lost. We'd be too busy. Um, and that's the state of economic development and growth and positive growth throughout the state that we want to see. And so we've been focusing most of our energy in that um, business growth space, and I'll talk a bit more about this. All of these stages, including shaking up a few businesses. So we heard earlier about disruption and disruptive technology. Some of our businesses don't need to start up, they don't need to grow up, but they do need to take a really good hard look at what they're doing and think about ways they can improve their operational effectiveness, their efficiency, and how well led and what strategic um, types of decisions they're taking. There are, those are all things that universities can add to as well. But I'm gonna dive a bit deeper on the Center for Business Growth, which is our, um, I think, point of difference and our big collaboration with the state and the businesses within it. So the Center for Business Growth, and I know that many of you have those bags on your table, and I know that many of you have not looked in them. So this is in your bag. Do not destroy the bag. Look in the bag. There's great resources in there, including um, what we do around innovation, but also the flyer for the Center for Business Growth 
growth programs for South Australia. This program came about and the centre came about initially because of a commitment by the university, the Economic Development Board and ANZ. Now I heard a little bit of crackle and snap about banks earlier on and I think there are um, big issues and sometimes long memories about bank actions, um, particularly in support of business. Um, I think most banks are waking up to that and we were very fortunate to be able to partner early and to get support for a bank learning about business growth challenges and willing to support some of their companies with high potential to transform themselves. This is now a statewide program. So ANZ took this nationwide, but we now have support to really tackle this with companies in South Australia. Um, through growth assessment clinics, sort of a health checkup for your growth potential, and then taking 120 companies in South Australia through a series of development modules with other companies who are wanting to grow as well. Because the expertise doesn't just reside in the university or the state or the growth mentors that we bring in or the ministries that help us with structuring opportunities, it rests with the people who are in the room. Because if you have to tell your brother-in-law that actually you need to move them on, that's not something that's in any textbook. That's something that other um, family businesses and other entrepreneurs have had to deal with. And getting that support network of other growth companies is just as important as anything else we're doing. So the outcome that we're looking for for all of those companies is that they're successful on their own terms and that they see their revenue grow, that they definitely see their profitability grow, and for the state, we want to make sure that they're able to create and maintain jobs and export where that's appropriate and really pull the economy up with them. So it works by bringing first um, the CEO in to go through an assessment clinic. If you've ever had an executive health check or been called in because you've reached one of those birthdays and they want to check some part of your anatomy out, well, that's kind of how the assessment clinic works. A little less painful um, because it's a one-day intensive with uh, Jana Matthews, who's one of the world's experts on business growth for small businesses. And um, going through your financials, going through your strategy, going through your marketing approach, going through the challenges that you're confronting with um, Jana and a panel of growth experts who really ask you the questions that help you reflect on your business. Now part of that's having a very structured approach, but part of it for many of the businesses in this room and many of the businesses generally is taking a day out to actually think about your business when you're running, as a number of businesses have told us, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So actually to start to identify what, what do you want to do and what's holding you back. That's followed by um, a nine-month program, really a year if you include graduation, um, where we bring people together to work intensively. And we're hoping to have a group down here in the Limestone Coast to work together to develop and, and grow their businesses. Um, come together, not just the CEO though, because all of you know you can't get there just on your own. So we bring in the top management team, usually three, sometimes up to five people from companies that want to grow so that everyone's on the bus with you as you start to grow your business. Most of the programs are in Adelaide, but not all of them. We're trying to get as many out to the regions as possible. And we use growth experts, learning from the people around you. We bring in um, the support services that are critical to understanding what your business is going through. So accountants and lawyers to help with issues and problems. And then a lot of um, action planning and collaboration with your team about how you can take your company to the next level and to identify both a short-term and a long-term plan for business growth and try to de-risk that um, with growth experts and your peers around you. 
I'm not going to talk about all the companies that will go through the program. I'll talk through the one that's graduated last year. And so we follow up all the companies that work with us to see how they're going um, and to give a top up and kind of follow up advice. Um, for the 10 companies that did the ANZ Business Growth Program last year, um, we saw their revenues increase by about 24% on average. The highest was about 100%. They doubled. Um, an increase in profit, which is even bigger than the increase in growth, which is important. Um, and um, they added to the state um, in 114, 114 jobs in 2014, and they added almost 200 jobs in 2015. Um, so 322 new jobs overall. Um, that's, for us, a key contribution to the state. Think of the flow-on effects for the other small businesses around them, and think of the impact of that in family and small businesses throughout the state. So if you'd like more information about that, that's in your little brochure. But think about it as an example of collaboration, because this brings together some of the best and most ambitious businesses in the state, with the state, with the university, with private industry, and with support services um, and NGOs that also help small businesses. So it's, a, it's nothing but collaboration inside the room and in the networks around it. And that, I think, is what the state needs. Um, it's what businesses need to be connected into the opportunities and the knowledge around them. Um, to raise their sights, to create the South Australia that we all want. So I'll bring it back to teams and the power of teams. Better collaboration isn't an option. Better entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is not just a startup, it's a grow up and a shake up. Better collaboration means better results for our graduates, for your employees, for your businesses, and for the states. And we'd like to help with that. Thank you.